Bring it on. Uh, we're at that perfect time in the afternoon to really reflect on what were the best moments that we watched unfold. Let's get stuck into the top five, kicking things off with Kaloa and Dino and a fiery finish to his round of 32 heat. Well, he honestly did everything he thought he could up until that final wave. He laid it down, he brought the rail, he brought such a variety of turns, those tail slides really pushing the limits and, and just asking the judges what else could he do and this is what he brought. A massive alley-oop, the biggest risk that we've seen on the outside section of the event. Judges rewarded it just enough to take that leading edge. Well, he didn't have to ask the judges. that They kind of gave him the answer in the scores that he was getting. So he knew what he needed to do on the outside. Big alley-oop, finished this one off on the inside and then started really asking the question, what do you want? <laughs> and, uh, it was an epic way to finish. It was so epic because, you know what, he really needed that wave. He was way behind. And it was a high degree, as Shannon said, I mean, a massively difficult maneuver to perform on the bowl. And he, he pulled it off. And he got the jump on Jadson Andre. At number four, it's Ethan Ewing. Sublime rail work on the outside, Bugs. This guy's starting to really come into his own. He's the highest rated Australian on the tour. And he wants to keep climbing this ladder. Gosh, he, he just looks so good out here in the Bells Bowl. And uh, it's poetry in motion. He's just so connected. The power moves so subtle. And you, when you slow it down, you just see how good he's turning. Yeah, shades of Fanning, shades of Andy Irons in there. It's all done with so much speed and style. It's, it's great to see. The technical performance in it is outstanding. And the flow, the linking between the maneuvers, as good as each of those carves are, it's that smooth linking that really stands out to the judges and he's well rewarded for it today. Well, the day kicked off in really exciting form. Owen Wright going up against Griffin Colapinto. Griffin coming off a win over there in Portugal. Owen just desperate to get himself off the bottom of the ladder. It was great to see Owen really start to flare up. So exciting to see him find some rhythm out there, especially in conditions like this, to look powerful on his backhand. He's got his wife, his kids here on the beach, the whole family. And for him to know that he was going up against Griff straight off that win at Portugal, and Griffin's been finding some rhythm as no, you know, no longer being the underdog in these heats. And, and Griff would have come out thinking he was the one with the upper hand on Owen, and Owen really needed to bring it through. And that buzzer beater, he got it done. Yeah, it was huge. It was emotional after this one, Bucks. Oh, it really was. I mean, this meant so much to Owen. He's languishing at the very bottom, and uh, you know, he just. He's used to being near the top, and this would have been a hard one. And, and like, both those guys served so well. This was the closest heat today, I reckon. A very close one. And then going to uh, one of our favourite battles today, Kelly Slater up against Emi Kalani DeVault, who referenced the fact that he was surfing at this iconic location against the most iconic surfer of all time, and he brought it. Oh, so exciting to see the Grom just out there, able to perform, to have that belief that could carry him past the round of 32 as well within his season and to start finding that rhythm and the results and to be able to hold that composure against Kelly Slater of all people. I am so proud of this kid. Yeah, he's done really well today and uh, it was a massive moment for him, something that he'll uh, celebrate for a long time. You just never know how many chances you're going to get to surf head to head against Kelly and to come away with a win is huge. For Kelly Slater, extremely frustrating. He had an amazing start. He had the opportunity to get back to that number one position. That was it. We saw his frustration in his failure and that's going to be that hunger. Yeah, well, he'll be very motivated when we get to Margaret River. But number one today, it's the heat of the year so far. Both surfers really lighting up the Bells Bowl. John John Florence, Joao Chianca, and John John. Just too strong, but Joao, uh, a performance to be proud of, Bugs. Well, you know, this was a heavyweight showdown. It turned into it when John John and Ross Williams were standing on the cliff. They knew they were in for a big heat. This. This was turned into the best heat of the tournament of the year so far. This wave here is just a cut above. Yeah, I love just the, the way John's able to, to really harness the, the speed that he gathers down the line. He is incredible, incredibly good at, at gaining momentum, but he doesn't wash speed off before he attacks section, sections. And this guy, 
He just had a different level of spark to maybe any competitor in the draw today. Oh, for Joao coming in in his rookie season to be able to find waves like this unfolding here at Bells Beach. He had a couple mistakes, and that would be the only thing that helped John get that edge over him. You just got to put your hands together for serving like that. That was unbelievable. Uh, Joao Chianca on that last wave actually sort of stuffed the last turn, but the work that he did prior to that still he still managed 9.23. Oh, so wow. that, that, that's just how much damage he did. For scores like that, usually you've got to ride it right through to the shore break, get that big finish in as well. But, uh, yeah, super impressed with what he's done. And it's just kind of a, a head-scratcher to see him so far down the leaderboard.